In this video, we're gonna talk about five mistakes that are preventing you from improving. Really, Matt? Improving? Improving in Valorant. And these could be things that you are consistently doing every single act that will just prevent you from ever climbing. And it can be very frustrating, so we got to break it all down. But the Game Leap website down below is the only place where you will quickly hone your skills and improve. If you're really stuck in a rut and you're trying to climb desperately, look no further than the Game Leap website because we have in-depth tips and tricks, guides, and VOD reviews to help you. So do yourself a favor and go check them out right now down below. Now, the first big mistake that I see all the damn time, and this is a really easy one to fall into because it's comfortable to do, but it's not really helping you, and that's too much aim labs or Kovac aim trainer or any aim trainer. Now I get that Tens grinds aim labs non-stop and you wanna aim like him. So you're gonna grind aim labs non-stop as well, right? Wrong. Tens has tens of thousands of hours of game time in FPS shooters. And while he does grind aim labs quite a lot, most of that is to simply warm up, push himself slightly further in some categories, but ultimately, when you play aim labs past a certain point, you're playing for the aim labs high score itself and not to improve your skill set in Valorant. And that's why, of course, a player like Tens grinds Valorant consistently and doesn't use all of his playtime just to grind aim labs, which is something that I see very often where a player, maybe they can only play Valorant maybe 25 hours a week, and at least half of that or more is freaking aim labs or Kovac. That is a complete waste of time. If you want the actual truth, I think that these aim trainers are only useful for two major situations. One, when your aim is below a certain point and you're a relatively new aimer, you're still trying to get the hand-eye coordination, you're getting the practice generally with control of the mouse, then sure, if you've never played FPSs or you've played them very infrequently, or you're using it to hone a very specific aspect of your gameplay, like maybe you're really bad at flicking left and you wanna practice that, or you're trying to warm up. These are the situations where it can be useful as a tool, but it's not something that you should be spamming nonstop, trying to reach for these high scores, get on these leaderboards. At the end of the day, if you wanna do that for fun, sure, but it's not gonna make you better at specifically Valorant. And that is what you wanna improve in. You can have the best freaking aim lab scores in the world, and absolutely stuck, be hard stuck in a very low rank in Valorant. And I know this because I've seen this. There are people that have cracked aim lab scores, but they're hard stuck in like freaking gold or lower in Valorant. Now, speaking of which, this relates to the first tip, but it's very important in general, and it's players that are trying to copycat streamers always. They are copying what a streamer does or what a pro player does completely out of context. Now, I'm not saying that you should completely ignore what a pro player does. Like, if a pro player is playing something because it's very strong and it's meta, you shouldn't just ignore that because you're not the same tier of player. But it is very important to understand how something works contextually. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you're playing a composition that is meta, let's say you're playing a very meta composition, something with like Jet, Viper, and Sova, right? And you think that because pros or streamers are playing these comps, then you can just lock them and you can win. Wrong, that's not gonna work at all because you have to understand exactly what each role is doing and how to do it correctly. And if your Viper isn't smoking correctly, if your Sova isn't using his utility to help get on site, if the Jet isn't dashing or using their smokes aggressively to take space, then the composition is not a meta composition if those things aren't in place. This could also apply to micro things as well, like how a player will take a certain duel or where they will place their crosshair will directly depend upon how confident they are in the mechanical skill, what an enemy is likely to do based on past experiences or the main that they are up against. But that doesn't mean that you can't get anything from streamers. It's just important to take in the information and analyze it critically based on your skill set, your rank, your scenarios, and not just try to cookie cutter copy every single strat you see, peak you see, tactics, meta, whatever. It can be completely wrong, leading you down the wrong path if you just become a streamer copycat. Next up, this is a big one that I see a lot of players really struggle with and it prevents them from becoming a better player, really, and it's always stacking, especially if you're five stacking. Now, I understand that the game could be more fun and I understand that you might win more when you're stacking in large groups, but at the end of the day, you are not developing skills you need to have enough impact to carry as a solo or duo. It is incredibly important to understand that your skill set in a five stack 
is not always going to transfer to your skill set as a solo player. You have to make plays yourself isolated from your team and always setting up crossfires or coordinating with an ally or even multiple allies that will work with you is great skills to learn and that can really work well with you when you have teammates that want to work with you. However, if you end up in a situation where you're solo or duoing and you don't have those set pieces in place, then all of a sudden you don't know how to make a play. You don't know how to get impact by yourself. You don't know how to get impact in a vacuum. And learning those things can actually also help you when you're stacking. So it's in the best interest of the stack for you to be able to carry even as a solo so that when you have to carry as a solo, you can carry as a stack. Also, if you only stack, then you're gonna have a rank that is basically reflective of your skill only in a stack not your skill as a solo. So in either case, whether you want to stack or not, it's in your best interest to not only solo queue or duo queue often, but learn how to have impact by yourself without these set set pieces that are always with you to work with you. Now, the next thing that we need to talk about that prevents people from improving is on two ends of the spectrum. First off is the selfish fragger, and the next is the people pleaser. These are two ends of the spectrum. The first is the selfish fragger. Maybe you're a jet and you're like, you know what? I don't want to dash and smoke in and create space for my team because my teammates don't follow up or I don't want to be the first in. I would rather bait my team. So I'm going to go lurk. I'm going to bait. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put all the impact on my shoulders and I'm going to be the one to pop off and carry. So I'm not going to play the way that my role should, but instead the way that will glorify my impact. And then the opposite end of the spectrum is people that are people pleasers. Typically, these are people that fill, or regardless of what their teammates ask of them, the teammates say, do this, res this, go here, heal me here. Whatever the case may be, they just want to keep people like happy and tilt free. And I'm going to tell you that both sides of the spectrum is not the right place to be. Trying to put the entire game on your shoulders every single game when you don't have to is going to make it so you have to go so far above and beyond every single game when you could have just played with your team, did the proper play style, and had decent teammates that would follow you up. I'm not saying there won't be games that you have to do that. I'm saying that in general, if you try to force this every single time, you're actually setting yourself up for a huge disadvantage. And on top of that, the people pleaser, oftentimes all you're doing is pleasing people that are stuck in the same rank as you. They don't know how to climb or they can't climb. Why are you listening to every single word they say just to not tilt them? Many times it's actually correct to do what you know is objectively right. Think about what they're saying, but don't just give in to every single demand that someone on your team wants because if they want you to make a play or if they call something out that is incorrect and you follow it anyways, at the end of the day, it's your fault for losing as well. Now, the last big mistake that is preventing you from improving, and I see this incredibly often when I VOD review lower ranked players and they have zero value in their money or zero value in their life. Here's the thing that you need to think about. What is the best case scenario? What's the realistic scenario? And how should I play it based on those two things? So let's say you have an operator and you're in like a, I don't know, a 1v4. What's the best case scenario there? Maybe you get a kill or two when people are trying to leave, or maybe you go in and you kill two people and you're not gonna have enough time to defuse. So the best case scenario has you killing two people, you potentially dying, and the enemy getting your op, which is a really bad thing. But the worst case scenario is you going and trying to peek someone, getting killed instantly, and now the enemy gets to upgrade to your op for free. So think about that. Think about what could potentially happen. I'm not saying don't ever go for clutches. What I am saying is look analytically and decide based on my skill level, based on the economy, based on the best and worst case scenario, how should I approach this? Maybe the enemy is fucking filthy rich and it doesn't matter if you die and give them an op because they could buy five anyways. Well, then go for the damn clutch and get as many kills as possible. Or maybe you need that op on your team because you would be much better taking it into the next round. It's important to weigh all the factors, decide whether or not something is even worth going for. And if you decide, hey, I absolutely cannot die and give this op up. We need it for our team and they can't have it at all or else we're probably going to lose. Then play in a way that prioritizes that, not prioritizes getting exit picks, not prioritizes trying to maybe clutch, maybe not. You play in a way that plays for the guaranteed needed value. Basically, do not risk something that you cannot afford to risk logically. But if you have any questions about any of these, I really want to hear it down below on the Game Leap website has VOD reviews that are going to show you step by step decision making so you can slowly eradicate all your mistakes and easily climb to the next rank. So do yourself a favor, go check it out right now. 
down below.